In this video, we're going to be finding the cumulative distribution function from a probability density function. The purpose of this is if we have a probability density function such as this, let's say that's between 2 and 5, then our cumulative distribution function will be a different function that will tell us the cumulative probability up to a certain value. So whatever we input into our function will tell us the cumulative probability up to that point. Now these can get pretty complicated, so I'm going to do two examples of different types. Um, the first example that I'm going to do is where there is only one function in the PDF. The second example that I'm going to do is where there is more than one function in the PDF and this can be a little or a lot more complicated and there's a lot more room for error on these ones so we'll be going through that one after the first one right so let's get to our our first example first example is a nice a simple one we've just got a, a straight a straight line graph here just going to sketch it in. It's between 1 and 3. And at 1, it's got a height of a quarter. And at 3, it's got a height of 3 quarters. So it's going to be a straight line between those two points. That's our, that's our PDF. And it's 0 otherwise. Right, so to find the cumulative distribution function, which is denoted by this capital Fx, we have to integrate our function between our lowest limit, but not our upper limit, because I'll just tell us the area under the curve, which we know is 1, but between our lowest limit and x. So this is how that's going to look. We've got to integrate between 1 and x. So that x is an unknown point on our graph. It could be there, it could be there, it could be anywhere on our graph and so whenever we input a value it will tell us the area up to that point from our lowest point. So we're integrating between 1 and x and whatever we get from that will be our cumulative distribution function. So I'm going to take the quarter outside of the integration. And so we should get x squared over 2, and that's going to be between 1 and x. We substitute in our values. x just stays the same, so x squared over 2 minus 1 squared is 1 over 2, a half. So if we finish this off, we're going to get a quarter times x squared minus 1 over 2, which if we multiply out, we'll get x squared minus 1 over 8. And we can prove if this works, if we substitute in our top limit up here, if we substitute that into our function, we should get a total area of 1. So if I substitute that in, we're going to get 3 squared minus 1 over 8, which is 8 over 8, which is 1. We haven't quite finished our, our question yet. We need to define the cumulative distribution function. So on this one, remember that we're talking about the probabilities at all points. So we need to say what the probability is when x is at all different points. So the probability is 0 when x is less than 1, that's at this part of the PDF. So up to 1 the probability is 0. Then between 1 and 3 we have our cumulative distribution function which is the one we've just found. So that's x squared minus 1 over 8 and that's between 1 and 3. And then finally, it's 1 
when x is greater than 3. So that is this part of the function. So it's 0 up to the function. Between the function, this is how you'd find the probability. And then after 3, the probability is 1. Okay, so that was a nice simple example. Let's now move on to one which is a little bit more complex because we've got two different parts of the PDF. So here's our question. As we can see, there are two functions to deal with here. So again, I'm just going to sketch it to get an idea of what it looks like. So between 0 and 1, it's got a height of a third. And between 1 and 2, it's a positive quadratic, which will look something like that. And then it's 0 otherwise. So in order to do this, we need to integrate each function separately. So I'm going to start with the first, the first function, this one here. And I'm just going to call that bit A. So for the function A, we're going to be integrating between our lowest limit, which is 0, and x. The function here is a third. So if we integrate this, we'll get x over 3 between 0 and x. If we substitute x in, we'll get x over 3. If we substitute 0 in, we'll get 0. So our final function here is x over 3. So that's our first um, part for A. Now I want to look at the second part, B. And this is where some confusion comes in. Now, we're going to integrate this function here between our lowest limit, which is 1, and x. However, we also need to add the area of part A. Because if we start from the beginning, to get to any point in B, we have to have also added the area, the entire area of A. So... Let's see how that works. So we're going to integrate 2 sevenths of x squared between 1 and x. Take that 2 sevenths out straight away. We get x squared. And remember, we also then need to add this, the area of this which we can find by substituting in our top limit here into this function. So if I substitute the top limit in, I'll get 1 over 3. So I need to add 1 third. So the area, the entire area of A is 1 third. So I'm adding that on to B. And now I can just continue as normal and ensure that I add that 1 third on at the end. So if we're integrating it, we're going to get x cubed over 3 between 1 and x. Remember to add that 1 third. If we substitute in our limits, we're going to have 2 over 7 times x cubed over 3 minus 1 over 3. And we're still adding on that third. That third, remember, is just the area of the first part. If we had a third function, then we would add, for that third one, we would add the area of both those two parts put together. But let's just concentrate on what we're doing at the moment. So if we finish, finish this off, we'll get 2 times x cubed minus 1 over 21 plus a third going to expand it and add in the, the third as well. So if we make the third a fraction over 21, that's going to be 7 over 21. So we're going to end up with 2x cubed minus 2 
plus 7 over 21. Collect the like terms. We're going to get 2x cubed plus 5 over 21. And now this function here should tell us the entire probability as long as it's between 1 and 2, uh, any probability between 1 and 2, but it'll tell us from the start. So if I want to check that I'm correct, I can substitute in the top value 2, so the entire area should be 1. So if I substitute 2 into that, I'm going to get 2 times x cubed, which is, x cubed will be 8, so 2 times 8 is 16 plus 5 over 21. 21 over 21 is 1, so we know that we've done it correct. So finally, just need to define our cumulative distribution function. So capital Fx. So it is 0 when x is less than 0. It's x over 3 when x is between 0 and 1. It's this function 2x cubed plus 5 over 21 when x is between 1 and 2 and then finally it's 1 when x is greater than 2. So that was how you find a cumulative distribution function from a PDF and we've looked at when there is only one function in a PDF and we've also looked at when there's more than one function in the PDF in order to find the cumulative distribution function.